Yo, what's up viewers of YouTube? My name is Tyler of Chico Crypto. Beer always in my channel. Um, today I'm drinking a Lefe um, from Belgium. Lefe um, Blonde Ale. Uh, not a 100% sure if I've had this beer before. But we'll have to definitely see about this. I can do. I can dig it. A little bit stronger of the, than the last blonde ales I've had. That's a little bit more flavor. I would definitely recommend this. So, thanks for the recommendation, viewer. And I've been putting my packs that viewers send me up on the wall. So, if you want to see your pack up on the wall, just send me some beer. I've been in crypto and Bitcoin for six years and I've gained a lot of knowledge and understand the concepts. So I'm about to sprinkle a little bit of Tyler knowledge on y'all. So welcome to Tyler's Crypto Education. So to start us out, I'm going to do number one, Bitcoin, the original cryptocurrencies. So to start out, we're going to talk about the birth of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin was the product of an unknown individual or individuals under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. So, Satoshi Nakamoto, group of individuals or an individual, created the Bitcoin network. So the first idea and proof of concept was published in 2009, titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. So the paper outlined the methods for using peer-to-peer -peer networks to generate a system for electronic transactions without relying on a central authority for trust. A few months later, the Bitcoin network began with the introduction of the first open source Bitcoin client and the creation of the fam infamous Genesis block. So once Bitcoin was released into the wild, the supporters, adopters, and contributors flocked to try out the new monetary system. By 2010, after mining an estimated 1 million Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto disappeared from any involvement and handed over the project reins to develop Gavin Anderson. So now let's get into the educational part. We're going to understand the Bitcoin and the blockchain. We're going to understand it together. So Bitcoin can be categorized as a digital currency. Creation and storage is done electronically. There is not a central authority that controls it. Bitcoin is owned by the network of miners, nodes, and coin holders, which I'll get into a bit later. So you must be asking yourself, then who the fuck prints Bitcoins like the central banks in sovereign states? Well, the answer is no one. Bitcoin is discovered. Computers across the earth are competing with each other to mine bitcoins. Mining can be defined as the uncovering of bitcoins. People are constantly sending bitcoins to each other over the bitcoin network. And unless there is a record of these transactions, it would be impossible to identify who paid who. So bitcoin solved this problem by collecting all the transactions made during a set period of time into a list which is called a block. The miner's main job is to write these transactions into the Bitcoin general ledger. The general ledger can be visualized as a long list of blocks known as the blockchain. The trust from the general ledger is sourced from the miners of the network. When a block transaction is initiated, they take key information from the block and apply a mathematical formula to it, which then transforms it into a random sequence of letters and numbers known as a hash. Transactions are not the only sources of hashes in the Bitcoin network. A previous transaction's hash is incorporated into the creation of the next hash in the blockchain. Basically, this creates a seal of the block and makes the blockchain tamper-proof. So miners are competing to complete the seal of a block with software specifically written to perform the functions. 
if they complete the seal, their Bitcoin address is rewarded with Bitcoins. In a nutshell, this is the Bitcoin network. So if you guys didn't understand anything, let me know in the concept comments and I'll definitely give you a good explanation of what I think. Um, I want to go into why Bitcoins can't be tampered with. So to visualize this, let's say we're working on block 35, the Bitcoin network, and some rogue miner or hacker decides he wants to change the um, transactions in block 2 to make counterfeit transactions. For him to do this, he would have to change the computations of block 2 all the way up to block 35. And that's 33 blocks of computations, a lot of computing. And the kicker there is he has to complete all of that, changing 33 blocks before the whole entire Bitcoin network can complete block 35. It's pretty much impossible and People have tried, people can't because the network outgrows a single rogue person every time. That's why they talk about 51% attacks in Bitcoin. When you gain 51% of the network power, you could, are able to change the transaction before the whole network catches up. Because you have more mining power, you can compute more transactions faster, you can change the network before the rest of the network catches up. It's a very simple concept. Um, if you have any questions, comments about it, let me know in the comments and I'll give you an answer. So, I thank you for watching my educational piece. Spread some knowledge on you guys and watch out for my next one where I'm going to be talking about Bitcoin, the major exchanges, how to get money into these exchanges, and how to trade. So, thanks guys. Have a great afternoon.